Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center, and for the Center for Security Policy, with some new information about Barack Obama's fantasy Islam. Eid Mubarak, Mr. President. Obama's fantasies about Islam made a new appearance recently when he issued a statement congratulating and praising Muslims on the occasion of the Muslim feast of Eid al-Adha. Obama said this, Michelle and I extend our warmest wishes to Muslims across our country and around the world who are celebrating Eid al-Adha. This special holiday is a time to honor the sacrifice, resolve, and commitment to God demonstrated by Abraham. Now, in speaking of Abraham, it is important to remember that there is no parallel in the Quran to Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18, in which Abraham is rewarded for his faith and told that he will become a blessing to the nations. Genesis says, By your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Now, the Muslim audiences Obama was addressing, they don't read the book of Genesis, they read the Quran. In the Quran, Allah says that Abraham is an excellent example, Uswa Hasana, a term applied also to Muhammad himself in chapter 33, verse 21 of the Quran. Abraham is Uswa Hasana, an excellent example for the believers, says the Quran, when he tells his pagan family and people that, quote, there has arisen between us and you enmity and hatred forever, unless you believe in Allah and him alone. That's chapter 60, verse 4. The same verse goes on to say that Abraham is not an excellent example when he tells his father, I will pray for forgiveness for you. So you see, hatred is held up as exemplary. Forgiveness is explicitly declared to be not exemplary. Obama was thus reinforcing a worldview that takes for granted the legitimacy of everlasting enmity and hatred between Muslims and non-Muslims. And he was doing so precisely in the context of trying to build bridges between Muslims and non-Muslims. Obama also said that Eid was a celebration of the ways faith can transcend any differences or boundaries and unite us under the banners of fellowship and love. Yes, indeed. Just look at how the bombs in New York and the stabbings in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and the jihad attacks in Fort Hood and Boston and Chattanooga and Garland and San Bernardino and Orlando, as well as Paris, Brussels, Nice, and all the rest. Think about how those united us under the banners of fellowship and love. Of course, Obama would insist that none of those attacks had anything to do with Islam. All the evidence that refutes his politically correct fantasies is simply waved away. The national conversation that needs to be had about how jihadis use the texts and teachings of Islam to justify violence and supremacism is once again, as ever, kicked down the road. Obama added, As we mark Eid al-Adha this year, we are reminded of the millions of refugees around the globe who are spending this sacred holiday separated from their families, unsure of their future, but hoping for a brighter tomorrow. And as a nation, we remain committed to welcoming the stranger with empathy and an open heart from the refugee who flees war-torn lands to the immigrant who leaves home in search of a better life. Now, about those refugees. Ahmed al-Muhammad and one other of the jihadis who murdered 130 people in Paris in November 2015 had just entered Europe as refugees. In February 2015, the Islamic State boasted it would soon flood Europe with as many as 500,000 refugees. And the Lebanese education minister said in September 2015 that there were 20,000 jihadis among the refugees in camps in his country. Meanwhile, 80% of migrants who have come to Europe claiming to be fleeing the war in Syria are not really Syrian. An Islamic State operative boasted in September 2015, shortly after the migrant influx first began, that among the flood of refugees, 4,000 Islamic State jihadis had already entered Europe. On May 10, 2016, Patrick Calvar, the head of France's DGSI, Internal Intelligence Agency, said that the Islamic State was using migrant routes through the Balkans to get jihadis into Europe. But none of this information has been allowed to interfere with Barack Obama's fantasies. Meanwhile, back in the real world, the Islamic State celebrated Eid al-Adha by not only slaughtering animals, but by hanging men it had designated as U.S. spies upside down from meat hooks and slaughtering them like sheep. It might have been illuminating for Obama to have taken a moment to explain how and why that was not a proper celebration of this feast of fellowship and love, and why Muslims must reject the understanding of Islam offered by the Islamic State. But while he has repeatedly asserted that the Islamic State is not Islamic, he has never bothered to explain exactly why and how it isn't, or how this misunderstanding of Islam became so widespread. 
That's how things work in fantasies. We don't know how Mary Poppins can fly. We don't know how Harry Potter can make things disappear with a wave of the wand. They just can. For Obama, Islam is a religion of peace. It just is. And no proliferation of infidels hanging from meat hooks will disturb his comforting fantasy. I'm Robert Spencer.